Hey everybody, Ohio Gaming here with a new Let's Play, Back to the Future, the game, episode 1, it's about time. So I figured out a new schedule. Um, this will be Back to the Future Fridays, and then Mondays, after I get done with GTA, it will be Red Dead Redemption Mondays. Um, since I'm going back and forth between each game, I thought, you know, this will be a cool little mini-series going... Um, tall Tale Games, and then, because this is a Tall Tale game, and um, I'm excited to bring you this. I've never played this game, I've seen many walkthroughs, but it's been years since I've actually seen a walkthrough of this game. Without further ado, here's Back to the Future, the game, episode 1, It's About Time. Hope you enjoy. I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 1.18 a.m. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, Einie. Hey, boy, get in there. That a boy. In you go. Get down. Get your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right, check, Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. You got that thing hooked up to the car? What yep, already taken care of. Yeah. My calculations are correct. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Hold on, guys. The volume on this is really loud. Um, I'm going to keep the volume as low as I can due to copyright. Miscalibration of the time circuit. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. Yeah, that's weird. The controls on this is really weird. I've. What's in the box? Don't touch that. It's plutonium. Uh, All right. Plutonium. How do you think I generated 1.21 gigawatts of power? All right, as you notice, um, the controls are different. You don't really have a mouse to go around and check things, so you gotta 
move around and then you can switch stuff with um, the right thumbstick or circle through them with the L, LB and RB. So let's get the thingy, what he was looking for. Got it. Flux capacitor? That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention. The thing that makes time travel possible. In this notebook, I detail the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic. Let's see. It's mass equals I times C, and E equals the square root of Z times D. Something's way off here. Is everything okay? Weird science poster. Yeah, Mom. I it was it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past, and, and Doc was there. Well, you're safe and sound. First movie, Back or no? It's all through the movies. So I'm thinking this probably took place after the three movies. Here we go, guys. Episode one, it's about time. This is all nostalgia to me. A great Back to the Future fan. If you have not seen the movies, you can find them anywhere. Go watch them, they're phenomenal. Especially, I like the first one the best. Second one, third one it can't top. Third one just got weird. The first and second one was better in my opinion, but if you have to watch the first and second one, we'll go with the third, because you know, last of the series, I heard they're making a fourth one, so I'm excited about that. stuff there is back here that's doc stuff the city has no right now to. son i know you're upset but your friend's been gone for months and the city really seems hell-bent on using his land for that new parking garage and hey is that a first edition jules verne it's just not fair these things can't get any worse hey marty hi there come to see if the old crackpot had any buried treasure Nah, I guess I'm just remembering Einstein. Yeah, guys, just if you have not seen um, the movie, go check it out. A fish tank? I never knew Doc raised fish. Doc's fish had weird taste and decor. I kind of like Doc. Does nature contrive it? So that even with a time machine, you can't intervene to prevent your own conception, for example.
Doc built this model of downtown Hill Valley way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse. You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, there. Uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. Come on, I saw it first. Yeah, I guess you're right. But I picked it up first. Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your business. Doc asked me to... Rounds weren't food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. <laughs> Oh, what's play music? What is this though? Hey, let me try, Marty. Now, Biff, let Marty have his turn. <laughs> uh, you got it, Mr. McFly. Yeah, Biff is kind of like the jerk in a way. Hey, Dad, why is my guitar got a price tag on it? Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up. I'll iron things out with the bank. Let's make some noise. Yeah, this is way different. We didn't have an inventory in the. Oh, you, you do, but you don't get to pick things out. Hey, look, it's Chuck Butthead. Let me show you how it's done. Now, Biff, I think that's Marty's guitar. Oh, uh, gosh, uh, you're right, Mr. McFly. Oh, here you go, Marty. Let's hear a few licks. Biff, Dad, I know you're trying to help. He talks a big game, son, but he's not so tough. I've been dealing with him a long time. Believe me, I can handle it. So can I. I guess you can. Okay, son, I'll stay out of your way. You know where to find me. Okay. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. I seen a little bit of walkthrough before I played this, but other than that, I haven't seen this game in years. Thanks for warming them up for me, butthead. This is gonna be interesting. Now watch me blow the lid off this joint. Whatever you say. <laughs> I can't, Biff. <laughs> That's what you get, Biff. Uh, Doc, where are you? Hmm?
Didn't you bring Doc with you? Retrieval? In case of my failure to return to the DeLorean within an allotted time, I program a time machine to jump to these four dimensional coordinates without me. As you are well aware, time travel is an inherently risky activity, and despite my elaborate precautions, there's always the possibility that I could land in trouble sometime. And that sometime is now, or then, or then, maybe later. He's in trouble. Marty, you've come to my rescue in the past. Or was it the future? There's nothing there. Last time departed. Uh, oh, jeez. Come on, come on, come on. Crap! Oh, great. How am I supposed to find him now? Okay, Doc. I know I haven't seen you in a few months, but I'm pretty sure this isn't your shoe. Let's get out of here. Maybe we can give the shoe to Aini. What do you know about this shoe, Aini? Great Scott! I think he's onto something. Yeah, it's not gonna be a two hour video. God I hope not. Two hour and fifty-eight minute video like it was yesterday. I'm sorry for that long video by the way. I just wanted to get GTA done and over with so I could start this and have a okay, regular schedule for guess. Monday and Friday. Yo, know, there'll still be an extra video, just, um, not. Strickland? Come on. Just as I suspected. Cool again. Get along now. Scat. Can you let me in? I've got something to show you. What is it? Let me see. <laughs> okay. Good morning. Leave that creature outside. Sorry, Einstein. Um, there's a lot of stairs. To return the shoe, I mean. I lost it ages ago. You can put it down next to the other one. Much better. So neat and orderly. Now I suppose you'll be wanting some sort of reward now. No, I... All I've got is tea and candy. But... I'm sorry I called you a hooligan. I try not to jump to conclusions, but <coughs> all, nine out of ten people in this city are hooligans. It's a fact. Look it up. Most old people are like that. <laughs> Always complaining. Uh, Have a seat, Sonny. I'm not Sonny. What do old people call hey, uh you kids? <laughs> 
<laughs> She's like one of those people, like they stare out the window and tell people what to do. Alright, I, I get it. Uh, Miss Strickland? Speakeasy. Hill Valley? Don't act so surprised, young man. Your generation doesn't hold a copyright on moral depravity, you know. Sin has been on the prowl in Hill Valley since the day it was founded. Wow, a speakeasy. The past, young man. Prohibition was a time when gangsters ruled the town while honest citizens quaked in their beds. Where was it? That speakeasy that burned down, I mean. That was ages ago. If you're looking for bootleg hooch... Hooch? No, I'm just curious, that's all. I'm a student of history. Student of history? My aunt Danny. Yeah, you general. Of hooligans and slackers keep their two right to think about this. Huh? The speakeasy used to be hidden in plain sight down there in the town square, right where that disgusting videotape rental store squats today. So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. The following year, as I recall. Doing some stargazing? No, I set my sights on lower things. That. Tim Tannen! Get away from that hubcap before I call your father! <laughs> Take a look. Go ahead, dear. Rebuilt in February, 1932. Fire must have happened before then. But when? I need a date. Don't look at me. I'm far too old for you. <laughs> I don't think he's talking about that kind of date. So we have to um, distract her somehow so we can look in the newspapers. I can't get a piece of candy. Looks older than I am. Nah. Man, she keeps it hot in here. Oh, I won't. I'm just gonna look at these newspapers you got. Let's see. Ground broken on sight of former speakeasy. Singer vanishes. Hill Valley Expo delights crowd. Soup kitchen exposed. Here we go. Speakeasy arsonist slain. Legal procedure gave way to old fashioned vengeance last night when a mob descended on the Hill Valley police station. The suspect in the speakeasy arson case, a drifter known as Carl Sagan, was pulled from his... Carl Sagan? It's done! Killed by a mob. What's the date? June 14th, 1931. Jeez, I gotta rescue him. My new paper! Sorry, Mr. 
Strickland. Uh, let me Oops. You've gotten my history out of order. Do you know how long it'll take to fix what you've done? Get out, get out, get out. Okay, you crazy lady. Brings back. I mean, I mean, I know it's a new story and everything, but still, just like the songs and everything. Marty, where you been, son? And what are you doing in that getup? Uh, didn't I tell you? I got the lead in the school play. We're doing Grapes of Wrath. Right. Sometimes you gotta go out on a limb for the ones you love, right? Wish my dad had understood that. You won't stay away too long. You barely know I was gone. So, time does not change in the future, I'm guessing, or in the present when you go back. We go guys. 85 miles per hour. Got to go 88. Here we go. Uh, voice glitches and some sound glitches I'm gonna see some real quick sorry guys Okay, just turn that up a little bit. Maybe that'll help it. I don't know. I don't know what's been going on. Part of the future, and then we just park it behind. Park it behind the place. <laughs> and hey, it works. Now this is as far as I watched in one video, so I'm gonna probably have a tough time trying to figure out this. Einstein, where do you go now, boy? Gotta fit in. Excuse me, 
Young man! Who? Uh, me? You're the only man in the street, and I'm looking for a man in the street reaction. Naturally, you know about the explosion that destroyed this illegal gin establishment. I read about it, yeah. What's your opinion of Carl Sagan, the stranger who single-handedly did what the law has been unable to do for ten long years, namely, rid Hill Valley of the scourge of liquor? Uh... There's gotta be some sort of mistake here. Doc, I mean, uh, uh, Carl wouldn't do something like that. It's surprising the lengths a person will go to when it's a clear-cut matter of right and wrong. You've got an honest look about you. You do support the side of righteousness, I trust. How'd Doc get himself into... Doc? Doc is his nickname. I'm good friends with Carl. You are? Really? Oh, but I need an unbiased opinion for my story. Pretend you don't know him. How would you feel about this heroic act of destruction? Mark me down as a supporter, the young man said, flashing a boyish yet virile grin. Hill Valley needs more upstanding youths like yourself. Do you have a message for the vicious gangsters who still roam these streets, no doubt plotting to corrupt our citizens with another den of booze, sin, and debauchery? No, uh, not really. That's the spirit. Destroy them with indifference. <laughs> if we refuse to patronize their establishments and glorify their wicked exploits, they'll soon be exposed for the pathetic wretches they are. May I get your name? Yeah, it's... Michael Corleone. Thank you for sharing your candid opinions, Mr. Corleone. Edna Strickland, Hill Valley Herald. I know. I met you back. I mean, I'm familiar with your work. You read my column? How sweet! I know it's just an etiquette column, but I believe it'll lead to bigger and better... Oh! Einstein, no. Down, boy. Is this wretched creature yours? He assaulted me once before. What's got into you? Aggressive dogs must be kept on leash at all times. It's the law. Look it up. So she was even mean back in her younger days. Jesus. Oh, so you don't press the right stick when uh, you run. It's actually the B stick. This feels so freaking weird. Go in the soup kitchen. some free soup just thought I'd come down for some soup think McFly the DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. shut it if one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher I'd be in a whole lot of trouble I could even get sent up the river you wouldn't want that would you <laughs> would you uh no of course not kid all right that's better what are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? What are you still doing here? Sorry, kid. I'll just run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Uh, now scram! You got it, boss. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway, I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. <clears throat> okay. Hey, um, never mind. Hold on for a second. Holy shit, you guys are all streaming. Where 
Where's my headphones? You didn't have the answer. I know. I'm trying to find my headphones. Hang on for a second, guys. Alright guys, I'm back. Alright, where was we? Oh yeah, we was in this soup shop. We gotta find Doc, or as he's known in back to the past, Carl Sagan that burned down the speakeasy. Okay, so we gotta find. This is so weird to play, because it's not like all the other Tall Tale games where there's like different controls. It's like way different. It's weird. Stack. But this was their first breakthrough game. Doc. What are you doing here? You sent for me, Doc. I did. When? May 14th, 1986. 1986. <laughs> The automatic retrieval system, of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, you, you might want to hold off on that, Doc. Right, Scott! I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse! Why would they do that? Yes, they didn't approve of my going down their speakeasy. Very funny, Doc. Maybe now we should come up with a plan? A plan? Right. But what? Take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place. Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc. You're already talking about the end of the universe. I miss that. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. Why don't we try to tough it out? Now that we know what's coming, maybe we sneak it past the gangsters with a bulletproof vest or something. That might work with one or two bullets, but from the looks of this article, it appears that I'm going to be mowed down in a hail of Tommy gun fire that rendered the innocent stranger little more than a puffy mass of bones and whistle. Who writes like that? According to the byline, one Edna Strickland. I should have guessed. Hey, maybe I could talk to the gangsters. Tell them they're about to shoot the wrong guy. I don't think the criminals of this era are going to be very receptive to a complete stranger telling them that their secret assassination plan is misguided, do you? I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break you out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be... <gasps> that's it! What's it? My rocket-powered drill. You have a rocket-powered drill? Not yet. I haven't done uh... it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen, a few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great, I'll just run back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. You need me to help you finish it. How the 
hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me! 1931? <laughs> Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely! Um... Won't talking to yourself cause, you know, irreparable damage to the space-time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. You've just got to go my younger self into finishing the prototype. Okay, well, let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why did you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. Will do. I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. So a little bit of backstory about Back to the Future. Um, I think they made this game because uh, the first, because they had the old Back to the Future games on NES and uh, Sega Genesis, which was very horrible, horrible games. And I think they made this game try to make it better than the old games, if that makes sense. You know that he worked at the courthouse. I better not talk to him. I don't want to mess up his timeline. Gotta go to the courthouse. Now, I don't know how long this first episode going to be because um, this is not like the rest of the Tall Tale games. This is completely something like they first made, so it's hard to tell. The controllers are inverted. Makes everything awkward. I gotta go to the court courthouse because he's there. So. Young Doc's in the courthouse. Not be able to recognize him. Don't touch those. These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I mean Judge Brown says so. Brown? Doc. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Michael, uh, Corleone. I'm Ed Brown, but I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. Naturally, in each two, they multiply by the inversion of age has to come out less than expectation value of age, right? No, no. What am I missing here? Or do we take age to stand for the living line on H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A might be equal to A's expectation value, but only if the coefficient of friction. Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. Come on, wait up a minute. You again? Can't you see I'm busy? Come on, Doc. Uh, damn it. Uh, drop the legal eagle act. I got something more important for you to do. Mr. Corleone, I'll have you know that the law is the very mortar that holds society together. And we in the legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. Your dad tell you that? <laughs> Every morning. See, 
I'm sort of in the science business myself. That's why I sought you out. Not that I care in the least, because science is the furthest thing from my own area of interest, which is law, but I don't believe you. It's true. I'm a scientist. So tell me something, Mr. Scientist, from your vast storehouse of scientific knowledge. Uh, the leg bone's connected to the thigh bone? Amazing! So Emmett, what time are you through with work? Depends. On weeknights, Pop sometimes keeps me in the office till 9. 9 at night? But today's Saturday. Right. So I probably won't get off before 10. Okay, so you don't want your old man to know. That's fine. Listen, we all keep secrets. But I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. The I am not a scientist. Go ahead, ask me what E equals. What does E equal? I have absolutely no idea. See, I don't know where you got your information from about me, mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong. Just give me a chance. Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. How about you knock off work early and I'll buy you a beer, a soda. What do you say? Don't try to tempt me from my duty with sugary beverages. Keeping the wheels of justice turning, that's my one passion in life. Besides, if I left before eight, my pop would kill me. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Come on, you can trust me, Doc. Uh, Emmett, it's your future I'm looking out for. In more ways than one. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you and science. Oh, that word again! If you insinuate I'm a scientist once more, I'll sue you for defamation of character! <laughs> Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone! Damn it. Uh, about Don't your... say it! Or do we take... Will you just give me oh, a chance? Oh, come on! Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone! What's this important business you're up to? It's a legal matter, very complicated, very abstruse. I need to obtain five sets of initials on every copy of this writ of indemnification. I have no idea what the hell he's talking about. I don't know nothing about laws. You have no idea what it's about, do you? That's how important it is. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Damn it. Uh, about don't your... say it. Do we have to show him anything? Now if H Doc's notebook doesn't belong, doesn't belong to him. Okay, actually it does belong to him, but not yet. In any event, it's probably a really bad idea to give him a book full of all the things he hasn't invented yet. Alright. Why? Just show him like he could be a big time inventor. I think I'm, we might have to go talk to, uh, convince young Brown, young Emmett Brown to help you. Yeah, I think we gotta, uh, talk to Doc to see what we have to do. This is very in depth, <laughs> more in depth than uh, Walking Dead. That's for sure. Stuck, Marty. Have you found my younger self yet? Well, I met your younger self. Right. And I gotta say, you're kind of uptight. What? You won't even talk to me. I find that hard to believe. Tell me what happened. You know, 
your younger self seems really dedicated to the law. It's a facade, I assure you. I had to keep up appearances to appease my father. I tried asking him about your rocket drill, but he says he's not a scientist. What? What? Oh, uh, father. What's he got to do with this? In 1931, I was still deathly afraid of my father discovering the truth about my scientific predilections. So I carefully kept them under wraps, practicing science at odd hours, away from his prying eyes. That sucks. That sucks. Now, my younger self probably thinks you've been sent by my father to check up on me. What do I do to convince Teen Doc that I'm not a spy? I'm not sure. Why does your younger self mutter all the time? Muttering? Why would I be muttering? I, I, I never mutter unless... Uh... The Hill Valley Expo! Expo? Yes, the Expo. How could I have forgotten? In a few months, the younger me will put on a demonstration at the Hill Valley Exposition, my first public foray into the world of science. Everyone in town will be there, including a number of noted inventors who shaped my career. So, it was a big success? No, it was a miserable failure, but it was a spectacularly miserable failure. One which marked my transition from an amateur garage scientist into a professional seeker of truth. We'll talk about your younger self's problems later. Okay, but don't forget we're on a bit of a deadline here. Oh, I know, Doc. We'll try and get you out of there. Be in frame for burning down stuff. It's not very nice. Um, let's see. This is. Will you just give me a chance. Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Damn it. Uh, about your. Say it. Okay. Okay, we still got a lot of stuff to do, so I gotta guess I'll have to go talk to him real quick. The controls feel really weird. I swear they're inverted. Ugh. Stuck! Marty! How goes the escape plan? I'm still not making any headway with your younger self, Doc. Really? What does this expo have to do with you muttering all the time? When I was younger, I used to be really stressed by working on complex mathematical conundrums. No doubt my younger self was working on some impossible problem in an attempt to work off cerebral steam in the weeks before the exposition. What was I muttering about? I don't know. Uh, H to the something with an inverse of something else. I I'm not so good at equations. That's too bad. I bet if we could solve my younger self's problem, he'd be more inclined to listen to you. I still can't figure out what your younger self is muttering about. Last. If only I could hear him myself. Let's talk about your younger self's problems later. Okay, but don't forget we're on a bit of a deadline here. <gasps> oh! I know what I'm supposed to do. Get the tape recorder. Record him muttering to himself. Will you okay. just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Damn it. Uh, about Don't your. Say it. <sighs> or do we take. Give me a chance. Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. And uh, about your say it. Erg. Mm, now if H stands for one for one dimensional harmonic later then naturally H to A multiply by Chance. Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. 
I swear I didn't do anything. I'm really stumped. I'm running to himself about when he thinks you're not listening. Give me a chance. Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Hey, about your say it. Or do we take H to stand with her midi line operator? Trying to get Marty to record him so he can understand what he's saying, but it's not working. I heard speed of light. Go back in the soup kitchen in a second. Maybe there's a hint there. I don't know, but I'm gonna see if a doc has anything, because I think we might have got something, but never be able not for to sure. Stuck. making any headway with your younger self, Doc. Really? Let's talk no. about your younger self's problems later. Okay. Don't no use. A a deadline here. Bill Valley Police Station. Christ, this place looks old, even for 1931. Hmm. I'm stunned. Or stumped, I should say, because I don't know what to do. Kitchens for management only, Rummy. Whoa! Okay, he wants to kill a kid. That's um. There's no actually one. Keep that door open without some help. I didn't want to actually do that, but. Hmm. Stumped. This wouldn't be the first time I got stumped at something. I'll probably have to look it up and see what I'm trying to do. mean. I guess this is where the speakeasy burned down. How Doc ever get mixed up in that? Hey, she's singing to her. Okay. I should record some samples of old timey people talking and use it in a new song. <laughs> um, I'll try to use the recorder. It's not working out very well. Here's Einstein. Oh, 
Oh, finally it works. How you doing? I gotta wait for him again to come out there and probably record him again. <sighs> fun times, fun times. But yeah, if you haven't seen uh, any of the Back to the Future movies, I really recommend it. They're really good movies. Made in the 80s. Which, a lot of people that probably watched my streams wasn't even born around that time. I wasn't even born around that time, but I still watched, loved to watch his movies. Think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I, oh. My mom never liked uh, Back to the Future. Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I, oh. <laughs> <laughs> think we got something uh, recorded. And now we now we'd probably go see Doc Brown now. Doc will flip when he hears his own voice. These controls are fucking weird. Stop. <laughs> right is left, left is right. That's that's just how weird the controls are. Doc. So Doc, does this ring a bell? Good grief! Is that me? I sound so young. I was gonna say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. So... It'll be fine. Hold on for a second. I wanted to make sure I was recording. What was H again? The Hamiltonian operator. Got it. In there. <laughs> Yeah, you need somebody to hang in there when they're in jail about ready to get shot by gangsters. It's not, it's not a good word that you use. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Yeah. Great Scott! If H is the Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A. <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Whatever you said. From the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week. I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket power drill. Where did you learn so much about science? It's like this. You know about my rocket power drill, then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office. I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome! I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Can I see your rocket power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say... Ah, that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. <gasps> Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel. I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I get the subpoena. Part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. 
Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Grandpa? <gasps> it's Kid Tannen. Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen, yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Back to long enough. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. True. True. There's Edna. The hey, old hag. Oh, hello, Mr. Corleone. Try not to draw any undue attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop, as we in the newspaper business say. Hmm. I'm sorry about the way Einstein lit into you back there. I don't know what got into him. Well, I hope you've learned to keep him under control. Yeah, I found someone to keep him distracted. Very good. Now let's see if you know your multiplication tables. I got a book. Oh, where? So I think we have to go over here to Kid Cannon and probably do his little shoe shine thing. <sighs> what the hell? You all over my socks! Sorry, boss. Get out of here. How about you? Huh? I'm sitting at a shoe shine booth. You walk up. Either you're here to shine my shoes, or you got a death wish. Which is it? Looking for a guy named Arthur McFly. He's my, uh, sort of a relative. He's my employee. He's very today. Since you're Arthur's boss, you know where he is, right? He's at the, uh, office. Where's the office? I forget. So when do you think Arthur will be leaving the office? When I tell him he can leave the office. Hey, you missed a spy. Isn't that Arthur McFly's hat you're holding? It was McFly's hat. Now, it's my peanut bowl. <laughs> Could I buy Arthur's hat off you? Could you keep your mind on your work, huh, shoeshine boy? Hanging on to my peanut bowl. Can I have some peanuts? Why not? I'm a magnanimous kind of guy. Go ahead, knock yourself out. Hey, kid! Yeah? What the hell is that? Hey! What'd you do? Oh, too bad we disappeared. Nobody makes a monkey out of Kid Tannen. Hey, <laughs> stepped in dog duty. That Sandlot football. They used to call me the streak. Get out. So awkward. <sighs> Stuck. Younger 
himself needs 190 proof booze to fuel his rocket drill. Well, that could be a problem. I know, we're both underage. Underage, nothing. It's 1931 and alcohol's been outlawed throughout the country. Are you sure you're about to graduate from high school? I'm kidding, Doc. It was a joke. A joke? If I live to be a hundred, and I almost have, I'll never understand a teenage compunction to make a joke out of everything. That's who I bumped into at the soup kitchen. My grandfather. No! Don't worry, I didn't talk to him or change his future or anything. Good. I wish I could, though. This era's tannin is treating him like dirt. Don't worry. If history plays out as it's supposed to, he'll soon be out from under Kitan's thumb and free to live out his life as a humble accountant with your grandma. What was her name again? Sylvia. Right, Sylvia. Hang in there, Doc. Alright, so we don't know where he's at. Got the hat. Maybe we have to get Einstein to sniff him. Maybe he'll be able to search where he's at. Or nah. Hey, cue ball. What? The truck just arrived with a fresh shipment of, uh, soup. Soup? Soup? Well, uh, this is the regular soup, and this is the special soup. Right. Special. Alcohol. Hey, what are you doing? I'm spicing up the soup. It's my secret recipe. Listen, this ain't the Savoy, and we ain't here to feed these bozos no fancy soup. The boss has got a business to rebuild, so knock off the goofing and mind your post. All right, all right. Just try the soup. Uh, I can see why you want to keep this a secret. Did I just see that thing go down? I did see that thing go down. That's just a little bit awkward. Huddle up, Emmett. Huddle? Just listen up for a second. Emmett, I can't get into the door. The cables are jamming it shut. The door? So your plan is to just waltz in there and take a barrel of alcohol? Uh, no, of course not. That would be stupid, right? I'll say. Still, I'd like to get that door open. I can't do anything from out here. Well, that's a simple matter of physics. A lever, some sort of stop. Let me see what I can come up with. Excuse me. Yeah. Can I have a bowl of soup? You're a soup kitchen. What do you think? Uh, what kind of soup is this? It, it tastes like. Scrolle ribolita? I was gonna say <laughs> cabbage. Everyone's a critic. Look, all I got to work with is this two-bit soup in a barrel and spice rack that hadn't been restocked since the Coolidge administration. What do you think I should do to perk this slop up? Let's see. Have you tried... Paprika? Paprika? Uh, I, I just think you could use a little uh, color. Color? Hmm. Re 
Africa. Damn it. Yes? Oh, that's interesting. Just a little mechanical ingenuity. In the end, the door is open. Yeah, good job. We'll score that hooch somehow. I'll keep cogitating. I hope Doc Jr.'s thingamabob holds out. Pretty neat, Doc. <laughs> nope. I'm still not getting through here. But at least those tables are propped up now. Yeah, we gotta... might have to find some way to, uh... To distract him, and then while he's distracted, go through the little gate thingy, Excuse Jigger. Me? You talking to me? Okay, I've got some more ideas about your soup. Do tell. Let's see. Have you tried salt? Salt? What do you think? It's too bland? Too mild? I didn't put too much pepper in it, did I? I just think it can use a little more salt. No accounting for taste these days. Move it. So when he's go over there, we can probably sneak past him. Okay, that's not going to work. I hope Doc Jr.'s thing with Bob holds out. Nice rack. Yeah, we got all kinds of... The Culinary enhancements back there. The kitchen's for management only, Rummy. Whoa! He moves that over every time that he's done with it, so I'm trying to figure out what to do. I still think the soup needs more flavor. <clears throat> okay. Hey, um, never mind. Hmm. Talk to him and see if he yes? says anything. Uh Obviously this kitchen isn't the speakeasy. Indeed. This must be some meant to cleverly perhaps in the basement. Right. That might explain the elevator. We'll score that hooch somehow. I'll keep cogitating. belongs to my grandfather. No, you don't say. I don't think that would be interested in Arthur's hat. Um, 
What is it, kid? I still think the soup needs more flavor. I'm trying to figure out what to do. And I don't know what to do, and if I think too hard, my head's gonna start hurting. And then we'll definitely be in trouble. Pretty neat, Doc. <laughs> nope. I'm still not getting through here. Wonder if I have to exit the place come back or if there's a place that we can go around back of course I don't think we can uh, my head hurts now um, we have to Games controls, I swear. All right. There's something fishy about that soup kitchen. No, you don't say. I thought it was just my imagination. I don't need to go in there anymore. Damn it. You have to go talk to... There's... The subpoenas for Arthur McFly? Have you seen him? For a few seconds in the soup kitchen, but I think he's gone back into hiding. Brilliant deduction, Einstein. Hmm. Einstein, let me let me Michael Corleone. Yeah. Let me see if we can Einstein. Hey honey, come here for a sec, boy. Hey boy, you find the guy who belongs to this hat. Where is he going? Only one way to find out. Alright, we got we're on to something. I figured that might have worked. I just wasn't for sure. Huh. Deja this, vu. Is, this is where we was at at the start of the game. Second cousin? Yeah. Glad to know you, but I can't leave this building till the boss says so. He's given strict orders. Sorry. Some other time. Uh, he's whipped. What now? It's me again. Please come down. Why? We've got something for you. It's a sub a subscription to the Accountant Weekly. It won't come out if he knows why we're really here. No, oh, right. <laughs> I'm not interested. And besides, the boss won't let me leave the room. Sorry. Some other time. You are seriously what, mister? You need to man up. Let's try this again. Some has to get him down. What now? I wonder. I'll give it back to him after I give him the subpoena. Darn it. <laughs> okay. I don't think that would be interested in Arthur's hat. Really? Bruh. Push it again. Arthur's already there. Can you someone's playing tricks on me? Uh... 
The camera is not focusing on him like it should. Like it was. What now? Like that. It's me again. Please come down. Why? We've got some important information for you, but we can't yell it. It's private. Then put it in a postcard and send it. I'm stuck up here till the boss tells me I can leave. Sorry. Oh my Some god. Oh, we have to do something else now. Or, what we could do. See if he comes down after we show him this. I don't think so. Of course not. Come on, Einstein. Her. Oh, jackasses are back. Let's uh, go to Tweedledee and Tweedledum over here and see what uh, if they're still mad at us that we stole their hat. Keep going that way. Well, well, look who's back. They say rats always return to the scene of the sinking ship. Uh, get him, matches. Really? You're chasing a kid because he stole your hat. You basically took off of somebody else. Makes a lot of sense. Hey, you need to calm down. Don't make me angry, Smucko. Maybe get down not. here and face the music. Not sure what that. Not sure what that. Can't get away. Okay, what am I supposed to do here? Way that easy. Nobody no puts We're one over on to get Dan and then lives to tell about it. You're dead meat. Einstein, help. What was that supposed to do? <laughs> Don't really make a lot of sense. I guess hey. we're gonna have to do this again. Hey! Because he's an idiot. Not smart to go over there. You might want to go through the yard. There you go. Jeez, why right. the tan is always so loud and stupid. Hey, Talking to Mr. her do anything. Oh, hello, Mr. Corleone. Try not to draw any undue attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop, as we in the newspaper business say. You don't have nothing. Let's go over here and see what going back in here would do. Um. 
What is it, kid? I still think the soup needs more flavor. So we can't do, we can't sneak on the counter right here. So we got to do something else. And we can't do something because the boss won't let him leave. So the, f the fuck. I'm very, very confused and concerned. Maybe Doc has something that we don't know or whatever. Stuck. What's the story with this kid Tannen jerk anyway? His father? By this time next year, he'll be pulling down a life sentence in San Quentin. There was even a song about it. Wait, if Biff will be born in 1938, and Kid will be in prison... As I recall, he escaped from prison in 1937 for about hours. Is he three hours? Uh. I know this really isn't the right time or place, but I found your notebook. Oh, so that's where I left it. Why'd you bring it here? Because the bank's selling off all your stuff. They can't do that! <coughs> that's what I keep trying to tell them. Well, you hold on to it for safekeeping. We'll deal with my financial situation in 1986 after they saved me from a grisly death in 1931. Ugh. Hang in there, Doc. <sighs> Try to go to Arthur's again. I seriously, I'm stumped. I don't know what to do. Talk to Emmett help? and see what he is. Start ice. Start yeah, ice. Stein won't have way. anything. We'll take it from here. Bring the thing again. What now? Uh, we could always make up a lie. That won't. Work. Down. Why? Represent the law. You don't want to go against the law, do you? No, but I don't want to go against Kid Tannen either. And he ordered me to stay put till he gives the word. Sorry. Some other time. Wow, he is really difficult. Okay, we have... We're stuck. So... What the fuck are we... Go in here and see if there's anything new. I know there's not, but I s needs alcohol. I know this. You can't get in the kitchen, but you can still choose the objects in it to be moved. Cause the objects. Back suddenly on top of where to be moved. All of this, I know this. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got a brain fart. Hold on. Brain fart. What is it, kid? I still think the soup needs more flavor. I got a brain fart. Yes? Never mind. I had a brain fart. I figured that he could go around back and get it. But. I don't want to mess up his timeline. <laughs> Sir. What is it? 
Let me do that again. Why is the soup in a barrel? Because it's hard to ladle off the floor. Right. So this place used to be a soup kitchen. What do you mean used to be? <clears throat> Despite recent changes in ownership, this joint is still available for the purposes of distributing food to the needy and the not so well to do. And no other purposes whatsoever. Right. I still think the soup needs more flavor. Hmm. The kitchen's for management only, Rummy. I don't want to get shot by a gun. Oh, this is gonna be, um, yeah, yeah, I know. <clears throat> ha! I did it! Ah, Miss Strickland, come for some more soup? Come now, Mr. Donkery, of all that is good and decent, if the poor of Hill Valley weren't so dependent on Mr. Tennant's overblown show of generosity. Was that a yes? Just give me the soup before I gag on the hypocrisy. I'll tell the boss you said hello. I'll just bet you will. Like I said, I haven't... Watched any walkthroughs of this in a while, so uh, I wonder. Cabbage soup. Last time I checked, do you have any other kinds of soup? No. <laughs> so I'm thinking we might have to talk to her. To give us the booze, so we could. Or the rocket drill. Okay. Sounds like a lot like GTA in a different, in a weird way. Gotta do this. Gotta do that. Gotta do this, and gotta do that. Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Corleone. Try not to draw any undue attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop, as we in the newspaper business say. Did she uh, stick that thing up her ass? Because if she did, I'd like to know where she uh, put it. Something shady is going on at the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. It's under new management, you know. And oh, we mustn't jump to any conclusions. Not till the facts are in. I hope to heaven it is just a rumor. That soup kitchen is the front line in the good fight. If it goes bad, what will happen to the state society? Not charitable institutions that depend on me for soup deliveries. You make hot soup deliveries? It's one of my many small contributions to the good cause. Healthy bodies, healthy souls, or so one hopes. I pick up barrels of hot soup at the kitchen, and I deliver them hither and thither. Hill Valley Orphanage, the St. Francis Xavier... That's not soup that you have, room, though. Foggy Mountain Home for the Incurably Insane, Shady Acres Rest Home... Oh, I can barely keep track of them all. It's a very big job. I bet it is, I bet it is. Yeah, I can help you deliver soup. I don't need a lot of time to charity. Oh? Which ones? The, um, Mario Brothers. Ah, yes. The Italians do so many good works. <laughs> if you just fix it so I can pick up the bottles. Okay. Now hold your horses. Let's not get over eager. I drive the soup cycle in this town, and I'm not about to turn it over to an upstart. But if you're well connected with the local charitable institutions... Yeah? You can let me know when they're running low on soup. Ah, damn. Um... As a matter of fact, I do know a local charity that's running low on soup. Oh, who? Ooh. Oh, shoot. The farm for unwanted children. No, they've already received their quota for the month. You asked me to tell you if one of the local charities is running low on soup. 
Does somebody need a visit for my soup cycle? The orphanage. No, they've already got all the soup they can handle. <laughs> okay. Alright. the story you interviewed me for? About Carl Sagan? Yes, but those pig-headed editors at the paper rejected it. They said my story was slanted, and that I was glorifying a suspected arsonist. As if their stories aren't always glorifying the criminal vermin that run this town. This whole thing makes me so mad I could spit. Though of course I never would. There's an ordinance against it, and it's so untidy. <sighs> I got a book. Seems to me we have a... You may never lay your hands on the bootleg hooch, but there's someone else who can. And I'm thinking I know who that is, but I'm not for sure. You have to deliver a lot of subpoenas? Father's always sending me out to do these dirty jobs. He wants to expose me to different kinds of people. All he's exposed me to is a lot of new curse words. We'll get that subpoena delivered. Will. But we need to... Wonder if we get chased... Oh, I'm not even going to try it. Like, I'm scared that we're going to get chased by him again, and then it's not going to change anything. We're gonna see. I'm gonna go back and see. Because Doc is stuck, so I know it can't be him to deliver the alcohol. So we're gonna exit to Arthur's to see if we're just gonna lie and say Kid Taren wants him. I don't know. I swapped the soup out with the booze. Now I've just gotta figure out a way to get it to Emmett. Never mind. Important information for you, but we can't yell at it. It's private. Then put it in a postcard and send it. I'm stuck up here till the boss tells me I can leave. Sorry. Bro. Some other time. Let's see what we have. Not anything of use. Nice. Nice, just, just... in there doc <laughs> all right I'm gonna see going over to kid tannin if that's gonna be an issue because there's something that I'm not doing that I need to do I mean we've already figured out the soup kitchen thing so there's somebody there's hey. some that we're not doing hey. He's not being very nice. Don't make me angry. Hey, I need. Look out, boss. It's it's that crazy mud again. It's all right. I've swapped the soup out with the booze. Now I've just got to figure out a way to get it to Emmett. Right there's Emmett. If 
Serving subpoenas is such dirty work. Why don't you just say no? Look, what's the worst thing that can happen to me on this job? You could get shot. Yeah, well, <laughs> believe me, that's nothing compared to what I'll get if I mouth off to my pop. <sighs> Any idea where we could find Artie? Not a jot. If only we had a way of tracking him. We'll get that subpoena delivered. Ay, ay, ay. You said you got a swipe. You swiped it out. Those barrels. Can I take one of those? Look, kid, bowls. You get a bowl of soup and a cut of bread. The only person who gets barrels is the Strickland Dame. Edna? That's right. She delivers the barrels to people and places what can't come into the soup kitchen. Organizations for the elderly and uh, the infirm. <laughs> you know, hospitals, orphanages, and whatnot. Where do you think you're going? The kitchen? The kitchen's for management only, rummy. Hmm. My head's hurting. I hope Doc Jr.'s thingamabob holds out. That's fine. Emmett. Yes? Score that hooch somehow. I'll keep cogitating. We scored the. I'm not even going to go there because he's not going to hear me anyway. That didn't do a damn thing. I really wish I could look at my chat right now because I bet there's some answers that I'm not searching for, but I can't. Be this, uh, I don't know, it's this hard to find out what's going on. I mean, I got hints, but. You can pressure Edna to make a damage slab. Naturally, she only delivers soup. Hold on. Let me see if I can can't do something. I swap the soup out with the booze. Now I've just gotta figure out a way to get it to Emmett. Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Corleone. I'm afraid I haven't much time. The meeting of the Stay Sober Society is due to begin very soon. You asked me to tell you if one of the local charities is running low on soup. Does somebody need a visit from my soup cycle? The rest home. No, it's way past their bedtime. You asked me to tell you if one of the local charities is running low on soup. Does somebody need a visit from my soup cycle? And then there was one. The insane asylum. No, too much soup makes them nervous. What? What's the Stay Sober Society? You haven't heard of the SSS? They do the most marvelous work, taking hopeless drunken bums and turning them into former hopeless drunken bums. I'm one of the founding members. And not to say that I was ever, well, you know. Anyway, we've always met in the cellar of the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. For some reason, the new managers don't want us down there, so we're stuck. We've got nowhere to meet. I know a place where the Stay Sober Society can meet. Hold on. Where? Residence. You mean Judd?
Judge Brown's place? Yeah, I happen to be good friends with his son Emmett. I think I figured it out. Love to lend his place out for, you know, good causes like yours. Really? Why, that's the most generous, spirited <coughs> yep, offer I figured it. month of summer. Please, that we accept. And the offer couldn't have come at a better moment. It's almost time for the meeting to begin. I got a book. Oh, Emmett. We'll get that subpoena delivered. Do you have to go tell the f thing or just... I don't know what we have to do. I don't need to go in there anymore. Bruh! Oh, 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 wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. Edna. Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Corleone. I'm afraid I haven't much time. The meeting of the Stay Sober Society is due to begin very soon. You asked me to tell you if one of the local charities is running low on soup. Does somebody need a visit for my soup cycle? The Stay Sober Society. That's right. They'll soon be gathering at the Brown Estate, and we haven't provided refreshments. I can't get over the generosity of your friend Emmett. Volunteers for our. Huh? Oh, wait there. Michael, what in the name of Thomas Alva Edison do you think you're doing? Don't you get it? You need alcohol to run your drill, right? Those bootleggers at the soup kitchen won't let us get our hands on any of their hooch. But we can get Miss Strickland to pick it up for us and deliver it right to your door. No, out of the question. Why? I can't just let strangers invade my parents' house. Yeah, you can. Oh, these people. They're sober. It says so right in the name. Well, okay, but a pop needs his peace and quiet at the end of the day. This meeting is sure to be too noisy for him. Be quiet. You'll be quiet, right? Oh yes. I play my tambourine very softly. You hear that? Yes, but. But what? But it's still impossible. I promised Miss Strickland. It means so much to her. The answer is still no. But think of the Stay Sober Society. What'll happen to them? They can all fall off the wagon for all I care. Okay, forget the whole thing. We don't have to test your rocket power drill tonight. We don't? No. I'll take the train back to Washington and I'll tell the folks at the office to give the patent to Dr. McCoy. Wait! <laughs> you will instruct the members of the society to wipe their feet before they come inside. Then you are, Emmett Brown. I thought as much. You have such a righteous face. Edna Strickland, I don't know how to thank you for your generosity. Um, uh, pleased to meet you. The feeling is mutual. This game has caused me to think more than the other Tall Tell games. Tell Tell. Tell Tall. Tell. Tell. All we gotta do is tell. serve that subpoena, and we're off to build your rocket drill. And get my patent. Yeah, your uh, patent. So I think we just head over there, right? We'll get that subpoena delivered. We should just be heading over there. I don't see why we're still over in here in this area. Right, can't go over there. He'll start chasing us. <coughs> Jeez, why are the tannins always so loud and stupid?
go see him to ask for Guess what? In order to free up your younger self to complete the rocket drill, I'm gonna have to serve my own grandfather with a subpoena. Great Scott! Actually, his name's Arthur. He's Kid Tannen's accountant. Marty! Whatever you do, it's vitally important that you don't alter your grandfather's future in any meaningful way. The consequences... It could be catastrophic. I know, got it. Hang in there, Doc. Hmm. Need any help? Um... Never mind. I don't know why I'm over here. I just had a feeling my brain was telling me to go over here. What now? It's me again. Please come down. Why? We've got some important information for you, but we can't yell it's it. Not. It's private. Then put it in a postcard and send it. I'm stuck up here till the boss tells me I can leave. Sorry. Some other time. Okay, we wasn't supposed to go here at all. Even though my brain told me to go here for some strange reason. Let's see what the hints say. To get an Arthur out, you'll need to go and get something from the town center. Town center. Gag. Town center. Wherever that is. We don't need to go to the soup kitchen. And we should go here. Go in here? How can I help you, sir? Without any money, I don't really have any business in there. Jeez, why are the tannins always so loud and stupid? <sighs> I think it's trying to tell me something, but I'm not for sure. I don't need anything in there, and I don't have any money. Get away that easy. Nobody puts one over on Kid Tannen and lives to tell about it. You're Not dead sure with that. Better start composing your epitaph now, because I'm gonna carve Not it in sure your with face. that. In both. Hey, Spiny. Look out, boss. Do we have it's to go? No, I don't know. Okay. I'm not so sure I want to stay in a place that welcomes transients. Wow, looks like they used a real shark. What do you know about Arthur McFly? Certified accountant. Graduated Hill Valley five classes ahead of me. Seems like a nice fellow, actually. How did he get mixed up with a guy like Kid Tannen? Who knows? Sometimes people find themselves stuck in situations they can't get out of.
Kid Tannen. What do we know about him? He's loud, he's obnoxious, he's not very bright, and he doesn't like anybody getting in his way. Yep. That's a Tannen, all right. We'll get that subpoena delivered. Gonna go to City Hall. All these controls, I swear. I'm gonna kill somebody. Jeez, why are the tan is always so loud? <clears throat> What's a tough guy like Kid Tannen doing running a soup kitchen? Mr. Tannen purchased the soup kitchen from the Sisters of Mercy in an effort to repair his reputation as a respectable community figure after his fine name was besmirched by the malignant and malicious malicious the actions of the misguided vandals that 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 done burned down his place of business. Is speak easy. I cannot confirm nor deny any claims of so-called illegal bootlegging at the the just eat your damn soup, hip squeak. Mind if I look around a bit? No. Emmett. Yes? Don't worry, Emmett. We'll get that subpoena delivered. If you say so. Who are you and what do you want? Can I talk to, uh, Carl Sagan? Are you his lawyer? Um, no. Then scram! Psst, Doc! Got any advice for dealing with Kid Tannen? Stay as far away from him as possible. The criminals of this era may be snappy dresses, but most of them are violent psychopaths. What do you know about Edna Strickland? Edna? We never really socialized when I was younger. She was a few years older than me, and we traveled in different socioeconomic circles. Why do you ask? She thinks you're a hero for burning down that speakeasy. She's doing a story on you. A story? Oh, yes. Now I remember. Ask Edna. The etiquette column that doubled as a pro-temperance soapbox. She believed that the consumption of alcohol would inevitably lead to a complete societal breakdown. Sounds like a fun gal. You should have seen her when the hippies started showing up in the 60s. She just somehow lost her mind. That would explain a lot. Hang in there, Doc. Now. It's me again. Please come down. Why? We've got something for you. It's a sub uh, subscription to the Accountant Weekly. He won't come out if he knows why we're really here. No, oh, right. Ha <laughs> I'm not interested. <laughs> And besides, the boss won't let me leave the room. Sorry. Some other time. Need any help? 
Um, never mind. Oh, I'm so confused. Ugh. I mean, I don't know if there's any other way, like, Okay, which is worse, kid's bark or his bite? Marty isn't cowed by kids anything, but other probably would be. Try recording kid while he's ranting. Kids ranting? <gasps> wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> Okay, I see what it's trying to make, make me do now. All right. Jeez, why the tan is always so loud and stupid? Hey, hey! <coughs> okay, he's ranting. This is more difficult than any other Tall Tale game, and I think it's just because it's the first Tall Tale. Well, I know I don't know if Jurassic Park was the first one. It might have been. Only making it worse for yourself. Don't. What do you think you're doing up there, you scrawny little runt? Get down here right now! Come down from there, you son of a bitch! Right now! That's an order! Hey, Einie! Look out, there we go. It's that crazy mud again. I figured it out. I know I wasn't that stupid. Just had to get some hints. Let's go to Arthur's and uh, I feel like an idiot having to go through all the hints, but really it don't really tell you what you actually need to do, so say it don't really tell you. And Arthur's still where I left him. What now? in the investigation into Kid Tannen take it back you can't get rid of it mr mcfly that was so Mr. freaking weird to report to the court at the earliest possible time wow failure to do so could lead to a warrant for your arrest arrest but kid will kill me stupid stupid arnie holy cats what am i going to do i suggest you avail yourself to the protection of the court oh gosh oh gosh Well, we've served the subpoena and gotten a barrel of booze delivered to your house. Looks like we're off to your lab to build your rocket drill. Ah, uh, you do have a lab, right? What kind of future patent holder would I be without a lab? Come on! Doc! I'm off to get the rocket drill. Good. <gasps> Come on, let's go. Time waits for no man. Are you sure? 
sure this is gonna work, damn it? Don't let the ramshackle nature of my laboratory fool you. If all goes according to plan, we'll soon be in possession of the most powerful rocket fuel known to man. That's great. How? Well, it's very simple. This crankshaft induces a powerful direct current into the electrolysis chamber, producing hydrogen, which must be periodically released into the primary distillation barrel. While tending to the hydrogen, we right. also need to regularly sprinkle these shredded protein flakes into this aquarium of tuber bacteria to generate the necessary nitrogen to catalyze the reaction. Cool. Oh, hot. Extremely hot. The temperature of the reaction must be kept at a steady temperature of 623 degrees Kelvin by carefully pumping these bellows. Any questions? Uh... Emmett? Why is there a brace of drunkards gathering on our lawn? Sweet fancy Moses, it's my father! So? So, he doesn't know I'm engaging in acts of scientific exploration in here. He thinks this is where I go to pour through my law books. Oh. You tend to the reaction, I'll try to get rid of him! Tend to the what? Can't we just start over after he's gone? It's too late, the reaction's already started! Don't worry, I'll try to help you out where I can. But- Emmett! Uh, coming, father! Father! Don't you father me, child! It's my fault if I don't get a spark out of laws and statutes. You don't know what you Listen to the words I'm emphasizing. Don't you turn your back on me! You have a release valve on your mouth somewhere? You do know what called your mother and that god. You can skip. Someday you are going to You will have to learn. To learn. What did you do? Emmett, who are you talking to in there? No one, father. I just get struck by lightning. Would that make you happy? Eating you, father, but I wish you would go on a diet. You will have to learn. Attention to what I say. Damn it! I'm not true with you yet! I'm... I don't to you release me from your unattainable expectations! Oops. I thought you were a scientist! Damn it! Don't touch anything until I tell you to. Well, maybe your burning passion, Father, but it is not mine. Burning passion. Wait a minute. Listen to the words I'm emphasizing. Burning passion. All room full of lawyers trapped in a burning building. A good start. No idea what kind of pressure I'm under. You will have to learn. Can't you see this is eating me up inside? Excellent. Now twist the valve there. Great. We're about a quarter of the way home. Damn it! Get back here! You're going to find out. Pressuring me to be something I'm not. I'm I hope someday you have children and you will look at all. You invented fire pop? I don't know either, but you can be damn sure it wasn't a lawyer. 
Sisters are spinning in their graves right now. You said, damn it! You no got idea what kind of pressure I'm under. Mother and I are shocked at your behavior, young man. Go, get that ticket. I do need some flame inside me that cannot be quelled by your legalistic <sighs> gobbledygook father. Ooh, you're going to get a turn to talk, or is this going to be another monologue? Mm, your lawyers are nothing but overblown bags of gas. Are oh, they feeding you in that school of yours? Oops, messed it up. What'd you do? Damn it! You go, Pepperton! I didn't think Galileo's rotations. Do you ever listen to yourself? You didn't like it here. Just pay attention to what I say. Damn it! Well, he said rotations. I thought you were a scientist. Damn it! You go, I didn't you go feed the ducks, father. <laughs> you didn't like it here. Ooh, you father, you get the more I know I'm right. You're just another one of your staffers who spins around you like a top. Some bronze have been officers of the court since God's heavenly spark first gave rise to man. And did you invent it? Fire pop? I don't know either, but you can be damn sure it wasn't a lawyer. Pressure? You're a child. You don't know anything about pressure. How many times do I have to prove myself to you before I can shake your overbearing criticisms? Burn your bridges so cavalierly, my son. I strongly object to the current of this conversation, Father. No, I wasn't supposed to do that. Shit. <laughs> Don't touch anything until I tell you to. Damn it! <clears throat> I didn't get to control my life just because you fed and clothed me for 17 years. Trying to spin this argument around to my face. You guy won't you release me from your unattainable expectations? You said, damn it! You got food for thought, Pop. It's cool. I really want to vent our dirty laundry in public like this. I can tell you go feed the ducks, father. Father, why don't you ever listen to me? You're pressuring me to be something I'm not. What will it take to light a fire? Pressuring me. Oh. Listen to the words I'm emphasizing. You said pressure. I did it may come as a shock to you, Pop, but not everyone wants to be a lawyer. Keep bellowing like that. Ooh, you're going to hit some flame inside me that cannot be well by your legalistic gobbledygook, Father. You said, damn it! Galileo's rotations. Do you ever listen to yourself? <laughs> Release valve on your mouth somewhere. You didn't like it here. 
You said... You yeah, were yeah, right. yeah. You go, I didn't have no idea what kind of pressure I'm under. <laughs> you didn't like it here. Ooh, I honor your wishes. You treat me like common bacteria. <laughs> You're pressuring me to be something I'm not. Your ancestors are spinning in their graves right now. Go get ticket. And did I get a turn to talk, or is this going to be another monologue? And I am stuck at your behavior, young man. Sunday! A room full of lawyers trapped in a burning building. A good start! Oh, it's an emmet! You got it! Eating you, father, but I wish it would go on a diet. Father, why don't you ever listen? Almost there. Emmet! Coming, father! Uh, get it! You it's my fault if I don't get a spark out of laws and statutes. You have a release valve on your mouth somewhere. Like the one great thing ever generated by a lawyer. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Don't touch anything until I tell you to. What use is a microorganism for long? If you don't like my performance at the courthouse, then fire me! Listen to the words I'm emphasizing. Get it. If the scientists, men like you would still be divining the future with sheep's bladders and goat gizzards. What'd you do? Damn it! Get it. another one of your staffers who spins around you like a top. Oh. Burning passion, father, but it is not mine. He said, Just pay attention to what I say. Okay. Listen carefully, Michael. You strongly object to the current of this conversation, father. Current. I thought you were a scientist. He's getting so hot under the collar, Pop. There's another one of your staffers who spins around you like a top. Why are you always bellowing at me? Wait, you always scatter condescension my way. Don't you release me? Did I do it wrong? Shit! Alright. Don't touch anything until I tell you to. Damn it! Uh, nothing but overblown bags of gas! <sighs> Listen to the words I'm emphasizing. Damn it! For scientists, men like you would still be dividing the future with sheep's bladders and goat gizzards. The veins in my head are tight. A room full of 
lawyers trapped in a burning building. A good story, you have a release valve on your mouth somewhere? You I honor your wishes. You treat me like common bacteria. You invented fire pop? I don't know either, but you can be damn sure it wasn't a lawyer. You don't get to control my life just because you fed and clothed me for 17 years. Getting so hot under the collar pop. Oh. Crap. My bad. What did you do? Damn it! The hotter you get, the more I know I'm right. Assuring me to be something I'm not. It's in my head. How many times do I have to prove myself to you before I can shake your overbearing criticisms? Wait, and she bites. You really want to vent our dirty laundry in public like this? Ears are nothing but a bunch of hot air. There, I said. Galileo's rotations. Do you ever listen to yourself? You are such food for thought, Pop. It's gruel. Oh, I come as a shock to you, Pop, but not everyone wants to be a lawyer. Eating you, Father, but I wish you would go on a diet. Wait, did she bite? I strongly object to the current of this conversation, Father. You go feed the ducks, father. I, you are going to learn, boy. You learn! Uh, I'm afraid we'll have to take this up later, Pop. My soup's about to boil over. What? This isn't over, young man. Whew. Are you okay? You and your dad sounded... It was an argument we should have had a long time ago. We... Eureka! Now all we gotta do is fuel up the old rocket power drill and you and, and I can- I can take it and go. But don't you wanna test it first? No time. The, uh, the, the last train for DC leaves in just a few minutes. All right, you've got to get this baby to the U.S. Patent Office. Uh, exactly. So tell me, Michael, when can I expect to hear back from the Patent Office? Oh, in about, I'd say... I, I can't. Huh? Emmett, I I'm not from the Patent Office. I don't understand. I, I, I lied to you. But I, I didn't want to. It was just, it was the only way I can get you to trust me. See, there's uh, somebody who's in big trouble. Uh, someone very important to me, to, to both of us. Uh, I can't tell you who, but I need to save him tonight. And, and I need your invention to do it. I'll get it back to you, I, I promise. And, Emmett, you're gonna be a great inventor. Wait! Keep the throttle at about eight. That was hard, because you had to do it really fast. Okay, Doc, I got the drill. Now let's get you out of here. Come on, start. supposed to be Doc! they're moving him to another facility for safekeeping oh I better go get a quote from the police chief
paddy wagon intercepted, suspect slain, and they're still after him. How am I gonna rescue him now? This game has a lot of. There's no way Edna's bike is gonna be fast enough to catch up at that paddy wagon, or is there? Hmm. At least the rocket part came out of this in one piece. Okay. 
hubcap at that would do any good. I don't think throwing the hubcap at that would do any good. Distraction. sorts of bizarre repercussions my younger self's invention of a flying bicycle will have on the timeline. Did you know that would happen? I had a suspicion. I never could keep those rockets from exploding. So, what do we do now? 
Now we get back to 1986 before our interactions with the past inevitably cascade into a calamitous future. Where'd you leave Einstein? Uh, Doc? He's not in the pound, is he? No, I think we've got bigger problems right now. Great Scott! Alright, that was the first episode, guys. Um, you won't see another Back to the Future episode until next Friday. Um, Monday, I will do uh, GTA 5. I will do an extras, and then we'll be finished up with GTA 5. So that's exciting. Um, I really like this game. It took me a while to uh, get the controls down. Um, Probably I'm going to have copyrighted because this is Back to the Future music and I'll probably get copyrighted. I don't really don't care. They really need to have an update or a patch where all the graphical glitches and everything else is labeled out. But uh, they probably won't because this game's been out for almost a year and they haven't done any updates or anything else on it. Um, but yeah, next Friday will be a new episode of Back to the Future. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, be sure to leave this video a like. And subscribe or follow if you're watching this on Twitch. Follow me to be to be more involved with Back to the Future. If uh, you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe if you're not subscribed. I love you guys to death. Don't forget to keep gaming. Peace.